I presume you're here in order to learn of Magecraft. I'll have you know, there's no room for the weak-willed in this course. And despite your best efforts, the sorcery of our time is but a fraction of what it once was in the Age of Gods. Much of the craft is established through pedigree, and the culture of mages is riddled with deception and moral depravity. That said, if you insist, I shall do my best to educate you in this miserable, yet fascinating world. In our previous lesson, I spoke of necromancy, focusing on the mage Kairi Shishigo and the various spells and tools in his arsenal. I hope that it served as a satisfying example of how, despite united into one broad study of magecraft, the individual lives of mages can be quite different. To continue broadening our horizons, talking of magecraft on a macro scale, it's worth addressing the association's adversary, the Holy Church. Indeed, the Church inhibits and rivals the association's activities, while at the same time employing their own forms of magecraft. While not dedicated to the craft for the same reasons, it would be troublesome for a mage not to know more about the Church. In the most basic of terms, the Holy Church is a more ambitious and aggressive branch of the Roman Catholic Church. It consists of zealots who actively hunt and destroy heretics and those who threaten their religious sanctity. For this reason, many of the activities conducted by the Mages Association are seen as blasphemous. While mystery and magecraft themselves aren't against God, the applications they're used for conflict, creating a constant tension between the groups. Over the years, however, both the Association and Church have found ways to coexist, compromising on various issues such as the Holy Grail War, ensuring that all parties play a role. That said, this peace is fragile and informal, allowing for plenty of betrayal and corruption. Of course, the Holy Church has its own problems to deal with. They take an active role in confronting humanity's sins, which includes the hunting of vampires, a broad term referring to sentient beings compelled by vampiric impulse to suck the blood of humans. While animals or phantasmal beasts can be manipulated, controlled, or contained like livestock, vampires pose a significant threat in their ability to spread bloodlust to their human victims. Oftentimes, this animosity is extended to other blood-sucking races, such as the True Ancestors and Dead Apostles. Much like the Clock Tower employs enforcers to hunt mages branded through sealing designation, the Church has a number of units that are sent to slay heretics and vampires, such as executors and the Burial Agency. Ironically, these hunters tend to struggle with their own lack of faith, taking to battle as a means of reaffirming it. This means hunters within the Church aren't necessarily different from common assassins. Their lives tend to be consumed by bloodshed rather than worship. As such, the ends justify the means, and to slay heretics, warriors of the Holy Church employ a branch of thaumaturgy known as sacrament. This includes conceptual weapons fit for assailing spiritual entities, which have thrived for so long that they've become one of the most stable theories of magecraft the world has to offer. The most iconic of these weapons are Keys of Providence. In order to purify their targets, they force natural laws back onto vampires, a process which involves opening a target's physical structure and locking it to its original form. You've no doubt seen their black keys, the long, thin blades that can be thrown or wielded to stab or slash opponents. While these blades are fair enough as physical weapons, they excel against spiritual foes with an affinity for evil, making them blades of purification more than simply tools for rending flesh. Oddly enough, their fame is not necessarily due to their frequency of use. Church executors often avoid using them, as they are oddly weighted and difficult to handle. Rather, a few prominent executors wield them so magnificently that they become a symbolic weapon of the Church. Even so, the keys have their merits. For one, the blades themselves are generated through mana, allowing users to simply carry around their rudimentary hilts. In the hands of a truly masterful executor, such as Kirei Kotomine, the blades can be formed in just 0.3 seconds. While this makes them portable, another advantage is that the keys can be formed into different shapes and sizes. When thrown by skilled members of the burial agency, these mana-infused blades can penetrate reinforced concrete and strike foes like a speeding car. Devout believers can enchant black keys to perform various rites, causing enemies to burst into flames, become petrified, or even attract swarms of crows when struck. Ciel, for instance, can render foes immobile by piercing not their flesh, but their shadows. 
Shiro Kotomine, on the other hand, can alter the key's trajectory mid-flight by incanting the word set. While not all members of the church wield black keys, they are most certainly taught the baptism sacrament, a ritual meant for exercising demons and wraiths. Shiro Kotomine uses this very ritual to destroy the legend of Dracula, sending the monster away through incineration in blue flames. Other conceptual weapons employed by the church are holy shrouds, the cloths once used to wrap around the saints. They serve to protect the wearer. As we discussed in relation to familiars, the church uses scriptures as the most powerful conceptual weapons in their possession, such as Nanako, the seventh holy scripture. They are noted to be able to defeat even divine beings. Again, just like the Association, the Holy Church has its own organizational system. The most basic of these are abbeys, religious homes that house practitioners, only allowing them to leave on occasion to hunt or exercise. Before being dispatched to Fuyuki, following the death of her father Kire, Karen Hortensia lived as a resident of the Sito Abbey. Mirroring the Clock Tower's various research branches, the Holy Church has the Assembly of the Eighth Sacrament, an agency of clerics who investigate and procure holy relics, such as crosses, the blood of saints, and other lost artifacts. As the name implies, these clerics follow an Eighth Sacrament of the Catholic Church, one that embraces the use of heretical powers if in service of God's glory. It is a hypocritical addition made so that the Church can compete with mages. While the lesser and greater grails of Fuyuki merely borrow the form and reputation of the genuine Holy Grail, the Assembly still treats it as one of hundreds of claims to the Grail, and supervise the wars in the event that the real thing does emerge. The Church extends itself to these wars exclusively for this reason, having absolutely no reason to covet the root. After all, the Church has its own ontological beliefs, which ignore the existence of space beyond the world proper, such as the River Side or Akasha. When it comes to using the Grail, church overseers actually prefer mages waste its energy on reaching the root, rather than letting a potential sinner cause havoc on Earth. Needless to say, if the church knew Fuyuki's fire was the result of Kirei's wish, they certainly would not have allowed him to remain for the Fifth Grail War. A less devout branch of the Holy Church is the Burial Agency, a group founded by the priest Michael Roa Valdemiong, who later went on to become a powerful dead apostle. This agency is headed by Narborek and her descendants, and is responsible for not purifying, but rather killing demons and heretics. As such, faith is not a requirement to join. All their members need to do is kill whatever and whomever the Church finds troublesome. Essentially, the Church has compromised its integrity for power, opening the agency up to all manner of psychopathic murderers and sinners, so long as they follow orders and produce results. This even means teaming up with strong blood-sucking heretics like Arcoade Brunstad in order to eliminate the less reasonable and more immediately threatening dead apostles. While mages are certainly no paragon of moral ideology, the mere existence of the burial agency seems to undermine the very values the Church should be upholding. This hypocrisy can best be seen in the torment of Elysia, a young French girl who found herself possessed by Michael Roa's next incarnation. Roa's influence consumed her, causing her to massacre her fellow villagers until Arcoade arrived and defeated Roa. Tragically, Roa is not killed so easily, instead continuing to reincarnate. As an effect of her possession, Elysia is rendered effectively immortal so long as Roa continues to exist. Interested in these powers, the Holy Church took her body and tested the limits of her regeneration, killing her countless times. Ultimately, it was decided that her powers made her a perfect candidate for the burial agency, and she joined under the name Ciel because she thought doing so would give her the chance to slay Roa, breaking her accursed immortality and finally ending her suffering. As if the church couldn't get more radical, we have the Order of the Templars, a group that is not officially connected to the church, but often works in tandem with it. Their heretic hunting efforts are on par with terrorism. The more official militant body of the Church are the Chivalric Orders, knights who defend what the Church deems holy ground. The shining star of this group is Riesbeif Striedberg, captain of the Vestal Shield Knights. She hunts vampires with a conceptual weapon called the True Apocrypha Gamaliel, another of the Holy Scriptures. As you can see, there is a divide between the more appalling hunters of the Church, who commit atrocities in the name of God, and the beloved priests who actually follow the Church's ideology. This is the gap between the executors and exorcists. These are roles more so than divisions of the church, detailing the difference between killing heretics and attempting to save them. 
That said, successfully exercising possessed humans without killing them is an extraordinarily rare feat, as most humans lack the strength of soul to withstand demonic corruption. Of course, there are exceptions, such as Karen Hortensia, who suffers from masochistic spiritualist disposition. When in the presence of possessed humans, she suffers the same effects, allowing her to be a radar of sorts in finding demons. Her life is one of suffering, sacrificing her own well-being for the sake of saving others. In summation, the Holy Church is a contradictory gathering of religious zealots who aim to eliminate all heretics who oppose their Lord. This includes the likes of demons, vampires, and other mages. Yet, despite condemning these heretics, members of the Church hypocritically embrace their methods in order to hunt them down. While there are those in the Church that genuinely follow their faith, attempting to exercise and heal the afflicted, many are hired or brought on exclusively for their raw killing potential. They possess various deadly conceptual weapons, mystic codes, and holy scriptures that help preserve them as a major influence that no mage can simply ignore. Regardless of your own faith or ethics, there's no denying the prominence the Church has managed to achieve. Thanks for watching! If you enjoy this channel, help me beat the algorithm by liking, commenting, and sharing the video, subscribing to Otaku Daikun, and, most of all, smashing that notification bell so you don't miss out on all of my anime discussion, lore, or Let's Play content. If you want to support me directly, there are now three ways that all provide the same benefits. You can click Join here on YouTube, or join Patreon or Subscribestar for access to exclusive vids and early access. As always, celebrate your fandom!